Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at how you can get a return value from a asynchronous task. And uh, I've made a few changes to the application since last time which I'll go through very quickly. Um, in fact, uh, let's take a look at the debug output here. So here's the, um, I'll clear this, here is my phone uh, running on the Android screencast application. And if I unlock it, we'll see the application here. Um, so now if I click OK on this dialog, and then I press four points on the screen, um, it collects the four points and then saves them in a database. And then the next time this application starts, it remembers that those four points are saved by using a preference. And if I hit the same ones again, it, um, it will work out that I've hit the same set of points and if I hit different ones then it will figure out that I've hit different ones. Except that I've just got a little bit more work to do here which I'm going to do now and um, I'll go briefly a little bit more through the application at the end of this tutorial but let's get to the real subject here. So um, now the way the application is now I'm using a, a sync task object an anonymous object here to um, to check the points. So there's my save points async task. But I've also got somewhere in here a um, oh yes, in fact that's the yeah this is the verify pass points async task. So I've got one to save my points, but I've also got one now to check my points. So it gets the points on the database and checks them to see if they're the same ones as the ones um, the user has just touched. Now what I want to do here is um, what this task does is it gets a list of points from the database that have been saved and it gets a list of points that have been touched and it goes through and compares them and the idea is that if they don't match we should somehow um, return false to the um, to the image activity activity and if they do match we should return true um, so kind of the question is if you've got a doing background method here like this how can you return a value to the um, to the uh, enclosing activity um, or in fact this this could even be um, like some separate um, task in a different class or something and something that I, I don't think I mentioned before, but it's very important actually, is that in doing background, you can't update the user interface. This is a background task thread. It's a separate thread to the, the thread that runs the user interface, and you can't update the user interface from it. And that's why uh, async task has a bunch of other methods that you can override, including this on post execute that allows you to update the user interface and there's also well, let's just take a quick a quick look here so I'll right click and go to source override implement methods and probably we'll come back to this but there's this on progress update pre-execute um, and on post execute that we've already implemented and they, those methods do allow you to update the user interface from within them now um, my on post execute is dismissing the dialogue that says um, checking password or something like that and uh, then what I want it to do is here I want it to either probably do nothing and just stay on the screen if the user touches the wrong points but if the user t touches the right points I want on post execute to trigger another activity um, and in this case it will actually go to my my notes which are protected by this kind of pass screen and I want on post execute to do this depending on uh, what, what has been figured out um, in the doing background task which gets the points from the database and checks them. Um, so how can I communicate from the doing background task to the on post execute task? And it's only in on post execute that I can update the user interface. I can't do it in doing background. And the answer lies in the third um, of these template parameters of async task um, because you can um, well actually let's just take a look at how this works so I'm gonna um, make doing background return a boolean value to on post execute 
um, but you can return any class here. So um, in in what follows, I'm going to be talking about uh, Boolean, but um, bear in mind that this could be any class at all, not just Boolean. It could be a string, integer, or some class that you've written yourself. So I'm going to change the third of these template parameters here to Boolean and with a capital B because we can't use a primitive value bool in uh, a template parameter and I need to change it here as well and um, I need to change the return type of doing background to the same type again so boolean in this case and finally this parameter that on post execute takes I need to change the type of that to boolean also and now in doing background, um, if the points don't match, I'm going to return false. And I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more in just a minute. Um, and if they do match, I'll return true. So I'm returning a Boolean value from doing background. And that is then received as the value of the parameter to one post execute. So it's very simple. And finally, I'm going to display that value here. Um, so uh, let's just have a look at that and in fact what I'll do is um, I will I'll un uninstall this application so I'm just going to go to my app screen here and let's find note squirrel and I'll whoops in fact I'll show you what I'm doing that will help um, so I'll find note squirrel in apps here and there it is and hold my finger down on it and just go to uninstall here and I'll uninstall it. So yes, I want to get rid of it. And if you feel you've understood what I just said and you want to stop looking at tutorial at this point because you want to get on and use async tasks, feel free. But what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you the application working and I'm just going to go a little bit through what I've done already. And in the stuff that I've already, that I've implemented since the last tutorial, there are no new Android concepts other than what I just showed you, other than getting a return value from doing background in an async task. So for that reason, I thought if it interests you, um, and if you've if you if you've been um, typing out this code as we go along, then uh, you could figure this out yourself, and it will be really good practice. Um, but if not, you might want to just. Um, do your own thing, look at the tutorial and do your own thing, but it's up to you of course. So let's just run this um, application now on my phone and I'll minimise this editor here so we can see what's happening in the console and uh, if you find your console's blank check in the console list here on the um, left here above the, con on the right here above the console because you probably just have to go to the other console so go to my Android console and we can see here it's installing and in, yeah, we've got success. So let's take a look. Uh, my phone is just beginning to show the application. And here we go, here it is. Uh, so actually, I uninstalled it, I should say, because I wanted to get rid of the SQL database that I had before. And I wanted to start again from scratch. So I'll click the, well, I'll go to DDMS here. And I'll get rid of the dialogue here. Click OK. And I'll touch four points. So I'm actually touching here the top of the cathedral and the tops of the two lower towers and the top of the tower in the middle and it says storing them and now if I touch uh, let's clear the um, let's clear the output here if I touch the same points again it now says pass true down here but if I touch different points it says pass false so it's very fine that I touch the same points again and as I say, I'll leave it to a challenge for a challenge for you to implement if you want to. And if you don't, then that's also good. But uh, what I've done is, I, so in my async task here, in my async task that checks the points, I get the points from the database using the code I wrote previously. And I check that both um, the points collected by the point collector class and the save points from the database both have um, they're both lists of the same size, four points. And I go through each of the points, getting the save point and the touch point in order. I compute the difference between the X and Y values, uh, and then I square them and add them together. And this is just Pythagoras' theorem. 
so I'm computing the square of the distance between them and then I compare the square of the distance to the square of this point closeness value so point closeness is a maximum distance apart that two points can have in pixels before I consider them to be different points and if uh, any point is further away, if any touch point is further away from the corresponding save point than point closeness, I return false and if it passes all these checks I return true and then we get that return value down here in on post execute and finally here we'll be able to go to a different activity in a future tutorial. Um, so that's basically it and uh, one last thing to mention is that previously uh, in my point collector, when I, had, when I had collected four points here, I then um, called point collected on the listener, which is actually the image activity that's listening here. Uh, and then I called points.clear, so I cleared the list of points here. And I had to change that so that I'm clearing the list of points. I gave point collector a clear method, and I'm now clearing it in on post execute in image activity. And the reason for that is that um, what's happening is point collector here executes um, it executes points collected in my listener and points collected in my listener um, then uh, will execute verify pass points and that is this code here but verify pass points now runs an asynchronous task so verify pass points will return basically immediately or very very quickly and the asynchronous task will carry on running after it has returned which is what asynchronous tasks do they carry on running in the background so um, if so what will happen is um, before what was happening is this would then run immediately clear the list of points and then the asynchronous task would then find that there weren't any saved points in the point collector so I've had, I have to make sure that things go in the right order. I have to use the set of points in the asynchronous task and only after that is use the points. Can I clear the list of points in the point collector? And um, that's okay because nothing else is happening in my application. While the points are being verified, there's like a dialogue and uh, stopping the user from doing anything else. But um, if I did want the user to be able to do other stuff while the asynchronous task was running, then I'd need to think about returning a copy of the collected points from Point Collector, which is also something you can do. OK, but that's it for this tutorial. And um, we'll, we will probably come back to asynchronous tasks in the future. But um, for now, I thought I'd introduce the topic slowly, because otherwise it looks a bit ferocious. So join me again next time, and until next time, happy coding.